Hey guys, welcome back to Builds by Maz. Today I'll be showing you how I removed these old satellite dishes from the side of my home and replaced it with a Starlink one on my roof. This satellite's extremely minimal and sleek and I replaced those huge eyesores on my wall. If you live in a rural area and are thinking about getting Starlink, I'll show you the whole setup process and give you my review. Let's get started. Removing these old satellites was a pretty straightforward process, and if you don't want to see this, you can skip straight to Starlink at a minute 40. But you can see they're just screwed in with some bolts, and then all these cables are also attached to the siding. Now luckily for me, my basement's unfinished, so I could see right where these cables led to and had easy access to them. And as it turns out, they were connected to nothing. That actually made things a lot easier. I did some pretty straightforward unscrewing of all the clips holding them in place and then was able to just pull them out from inside the wall. Then there was this one little wire that didn't fit, so I pulled it from the other direction. With the wires clear and out of the way, I could go ahead and remove the satellites. These are just held in place with standard bolts, so it's really pretty simple, you just need to unscrew them, and it should come free from the wall. To fill in the holes left behind, I use this Quadmax exterior sealant. It's definitely important to do this, otherwise you may get rain into your home. I'll be painting over this later, but that's the whole process. The satellites are already off the house, and it really makes such a difference for something so simple. Alright, moving on to Starlink. The standard satellite kit comes with this 50 foot cable, so you'll need to see if that's long enough for where you're wanting to position the satellite. And they do sell longer cables if needed. I first picked the central location in my home for where I was going to put the router, and then ran the cable from there. This allowed me to see how far I could stretch the cable on my roof to see what parts I could reach. It's important to pick a location with as few obstructions as possible. You can see here I've got a few tall trees in the way, so it's in my interest to position the satellite a little further back from that. Within the Starlink app, there's also a way to check if the location you want is free of obstructions. You'll navigate through the app, picking your specific Starlink, and then it will tell you to point your camera up at the sky. You really just need to make sure you point your camera at all parts of the sky and then the Starlink will run an analysis for you. This is a pretty great feature, so you don't accidentally put your Starlink in a bad spot. You can see here, based on my analysis, these little red spots on the bottom are the trees that would be obstructing the view, but it's mostly blue, so I think I'll be okay here. Here's the short wall mount, which allows you to put the satellite on the side of your home rather than directly on the roof. Normally it would go somewhere like right here on the very edge of your home, but since I have these skylights, I'm going to utilize this edge instead. Now before you order this mount, you need to check if there's any obstructions in the way of your roof. You can see it doesn't extend out very far. I've just got these few shingles hanging off, but if you had a gutter or something here, you'd want to get the long arm mount, which extends further away from the roof. I checked for any studs in this area, then positioned the mount where I wanted it, making sure it was level, and then I drilled a couple of pilot holes. And then I almost drilled into the wrong mark right here. Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. Okay, got it. I picked this mount because I'd rather drill into the side of my house rather than directly through the roof like you would with a regular roof mount. I think it's just generally better to avoid putting holes in your shingles to avoid leaks. But to fully waterproof these holes, this wall mount does come with some silicone sealant, which you can push into these holes, wipe off any excess, and then screw the bolts directly into it before it has time to dry. This will ensure you have a really solid watertight seal. I gave it one last check for level before tightening these bolts all the way. These are pretty long and will hold the satellite to the home very securely. Next I need to run the satellite wire down the side of my home inside to connect with the router. I'll be putting it right inside the wall on this little shelf here. I ordered the cable routing kit which will make it easy to run the wire through the wall. It comes with this extra long drill bit and you want to drill it at a slight downward angle towards the outside of the home. If any rain or water gets through the outer seal, we want it staying outside the home. If we were to drill it this direction, water would be more likely to sneak in. After making sure that I wasn't lined up with any studs, plumbing, or electrical wiring, I went ahead and drilled the hole. You can see the small hole here, and then if we go out to the outside, you'll see the exit hole. Using this included spade bit, we can now drill larger holes on both the interior and exterior 
to allow room for the Starlink cable to pass through. We're going to use this end of the Starlink cable on the right side, not this one that's bent at an angle. This end is the only one that will actually fit through the hole. You can push the end into the included plastic cable guide, and this will make it easier to pull through the wall. Feed it through until you can tell it's gone through the exterior hole. This might be a little difficult if you've got insulation or anything else in the way. But once you've got it through, you can just pull the whole cable from the outside. I brought this end of the cable up to the roof, and you can run it up to the bottom of the short wall mount. It then goes into the base of the Starlink, and make sure to push it all the way back. The Starlink then snaps into the short wall mount, and you should hear a little click so you know that it's in securely. If you need to remove it, you can just press this little button on the back and the Starlink will lift up. We'll attach this included clip to the base of the mount and then everything should be good to go. Next, I'm going to use these cable management clips to direct this cord down the roof so there isn't so much slack hanging off. You just slip the clip onto the cable and then mark where you want to drill it into the wall. Make a pilot hole and then screw it into place. I tightened it about 90% of the way and then positioned the cable exactly where I wanted it and then tightened it a little further so that the cable wasn't free to move but it wasn't over tightened so that it was flattening or squishing the cable. The one thing you need to be careful about here is that when you're screwing it into the wall just make sure you're not accidentally screwing directly through the cord. So we've got all this tied down against this wall here but I don't want to put any into the roof so from here to the side of the house, we're not gonna have any cables because I don't want any holes in the roof. So we're just gonna make a straight line, take it to the wall. So here it's hanging off the roof and I have it hanging right in line with where I drilled the hole earlier for connection to the router. So I just used more of those clips and started putting them onto the side of the wall. When you get to the bottom, you actually wanna make a U shape below the hole before running it inside. This way, if there's rainwater running down the cord, it won't run into the house, but will instead fall off below it. So you basically want it to look like this. There's this little end cap which clips into place, and then we're gonna use some more of that same silicone product to create a watertight seal, putting it all the way around the edges before pushing it snugly into the hole. We'll do the same on the inside, but you don't need the silicone here. Finally, we can start getting things operational. You'll take this end of the satellite cable and put it into the bottom of the router, and then make sure you plug it into the power outlet. You should see this small little white light indicating that the power is on. You'll also start to see your satellite moving around as it orients itself and works to find a signal. If you're gonna be using a third-party router, there's one more step we need to take. You'll unplug the satellite cable from the bottom of the Starlink router. We'll replace it with an ethernet adapter, which you have to purchase separately. One end plugs right into that same spot in the bottom of the Starlink router, and it has an attachment where you plug in the cable from the satellite. Then you can run an ethernet cord directly from your third party router into the open slot on the ethernet adapter. So just as a recap, we have this cable coming directly from the satellite and attaching into the ethernet adapter. The other end goes into the Starlink router and then there's a portion where you have this ethernet cord which plugs into your third party router. In order to actually use your third party router, you'll have to bypass the Starlink one. So go into the app, hit settings, scroll down and there's an option for bypass mode. Then scroll this arrow over to the right and this will bypass the Starlink router and the satellite will feed directly to the third party router. This is a great feature if you have a large house or want to cover a large area with a mesh network or just a stronger router. The last step is to clean things up a bit. There are a lot of wires here, so we'll do some quick cable management, get things looking nice and tidy, and then we're ready to use our Starlink network. This really was such an upgrade to our home. You can hardly even tell the satellites there versus these old clunkers which looked horrible on the side of our home. All the wiring's neat and organized, and once you repaint the home, you'll hardly be able to see it. As far as performance goes, the Starlink has been phenomenal. We regularly get speeds of over 50 megabytes per second and sometimes reaching over 100, 
which is great for being this remote. The fastest local provider we had had speeds maxing out at about 20 megabytes a second, so this is a huge improvement. I definitely recommend it if you live in a rural area, and I hope this video will help you with getting things set up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.